name is Sanchi. I am from Blockchain Founders Fund, uh, working as an investments and financial professional here. Um, we are a 75 million fund. We cl just closed recently, and uh, we're looking to actively deploy in interesting companies in the Web3 space. Uh, we already have 50 plus companies in the portfolio, and we're looking at more emerging tech uh, type of startups in the recent uh, times, including like MEV, ZK. Um, before this, previously I used to work with Trustvesta Financial Services and then started my VC journey at TKN Advisors. Um, I come from a business and finance background and uh, yeah, that's a quick intro about me. Over to you, Badri. Badri, yeah. Yeah, good, good morning uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Badrinath. I am founder of Cointrack. On, uh, at Cointrack, we are building uh, various blockchain-based products, uh, including Bitspan, Soilium, and some other uh, products. So uh, be before Cointrack, before coming into the decentralization and the blockchain technology, uh, I was working on uh, digital adoption. And now, uh, since last two years, I am focu uh, focusing on uh, blockchain adoption and uh, decentralization. Yeah, over to you. Um, let me just, okay, this test work. Hi everybody, my name is Shashwat. Um, I've been a marketeer in Web3 for close to three years since before it was called Web3. Before that, I was a founder in normal human world in the food space, um, but then COVID killed that. And before that, I was a novelist, self-published, and I learned marketing basically through trying to sell that first book of mine. Um, currently, I'm CMO at this company called NFT3. We're a decentralized identity platform um, backed by Animoca Brands as lead investors with the product live already and uh, 400k plus users. And I'd love to talk about culture and Web3. Essentially, that's my shtick, you know. Uh, I think there's a lot of tech talk, there's a lot of investment speculation talk, not enough culture talk. And I think even when we speak to the DAO topic, that's where really the solution always will come from, yeah. you know. Yeah. But that's me in a nutshell. Okay, great, uh, thanks. We are ready for Raj. Once he's here, he would be on the stage as well. But if you look at DAOs as well, the decentralized autonomous organizations, now in fact, it started with a controversy way back in 2017, 2018, where it was hacked and they were actually want have to roll back Ethereum just as a history of what happened. But that did not dent people to go ahead and start you know, creating DAOs. So in a very, very basic sense, we are looking at how we could make decision-making decentralized. Look at a corporate structure. We have a chairman, you have a managing director, you have board of directors. Any resolution that needs to be passed or any decisions that we've taken uh, go through a voting process, and then you will get a chance to see that out of 10 people, we need to get six votes to, be, to pass the resolution. But because we are talking about blockchain space here, it will be good to understand we have now, different uh, profiles here. In fact, we have Sanchi from the investor point of view, right? uh, blockchain founders fund. And we have uh, Badrinath who is next and is looking to raise some funds, which is an interesting you know, topic. So we've been discussing about what happens if he's, and he's been humble enough now to talk about his other ventures, but he runs a crypto exchange called Bitspan and also has his own L1 protocol called Soil. We'll get into that. But from a founder's perspective, why there's a need for DAO? And then if you look at uh, Shashwat bringing in the actual culture at Upper Cafe, I said, how does community you know, respond to when you talk about a DAO, right? So let's talk about the basics part. I started with this one. I will leave to you know, maybe Shashwat to start, you know, to say why there's a need for a DAO at all, first of all, right? You know, if you look at from that sense, maybe you can throw some light, you know, you can get on it. Look, I think one of the things that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of debate about why are DAOs not working? Why is the, say just in token terms, entry barrier so high? Like say, suppose you have to, um, you know, ask some, e e any, any uh, proposal on compound, right? Okay. Requires a couple of hundred thousand dollars worth of compound tokens. It's insane actually. Like it's not really very, it's not giving you the democracy that it's supposed to. Hey Rosh, by the way. <laughs> uh, but, so, so I think that speaks less to the brokenness of the DAO model or blockchain itself and more to the brokenness of democracy itself. Cut. There's a size problem. Cut. And what blockchain is trying to do is scale democracy now through technology, you know. And we're in the very, very initial floundering steps. 
Absolutely. So it's kind of like, hey, well, you know, the French format of democracy was not perfect. Yeah, but we're still struggling onwards in the process of trying to build democracy. So if a piece of technology for the first time comes in that says, hey, you could theoretically do what Switzerland has done with Correct. democracy, Correct. again, the, what helped was the, the smallness of scale. Absolutely. Of course, they're incredible people, but there's also the scale issue, say, with a country like India. Correct. But when, when you bring in blockchain, can we now start to scale democracy using technology? Exactly. Yeah. But again, the key is people. The technology will not start running democracy. Correct. The people vote, not all of them vote, same in all democracies as well as DAOs. That's kind of my take on it at least. Good. We have uh, Rosh, take a minute to introduce Hi. yourself. I believe, I believe you went to the wrong Hilton and obviously got a chance to see the Bengaluru traffic. Uh, comes from Mumbai today morning. Uh, Rosh, it's all yours. Introduce yourself, please. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank you for your patience, guys. I'm, I'll blame it on the Bangalore traffic. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Rosh, I'm the founder of Permissionless, uh, under the new entrants in the Web3 space in India. I was active in Silicon Valley and the MENA region from the last two years. Flew back to India because I think we are in a very, how to say it, in a very good spot as a country where we can supply a lot of talent to the world. Uh, we are like constantly, if, if you look at the trends that are happening outside, uh, we are like constantly democratizing half the value people used to perceive. So I think that it's a very big opportunity for entrepreneurs like me to come back to India and build here. In, like supplying, market nahi hai, but uh, we can always, you know, uh, supply outside. So I'm the founder of Permissionless, we do crazy things. We were the creators of, uh, you have, might be seeing Geeta GPT today. We were the ones who invented Krishna AI with it. So we are an AI company. We use blockchain as a settlement layer for a lot of uh, transactions that we do. Uh, do I have to speak something about the DAO or something? Yeah, we'll talk. I'll come to you. I just yeah, want to introduce yourself, you know, that company. Hi, We've been hi, talking. Hi. <laughs> we just come. All right. I think so, the traffic has confused him a little bit. <laughs> not, not ever. No, no, you'll be distorted. No, coming back again, uh, Swanchi, right? Now, if, if Badri wants to do a DAO, right, and he comes to you as an investor, right, I say, I need to raise $2 million. Now, look at in the blockchain space, what happens, you need to have that initial kind of you know, investment you've got to do, at least to get the community involved and because it's so democratized we need to have the community coming in and say okay now while he could start issuing the tokens the governance tokens uh, for one of his say, soil protocol but what would be your thought right when he comes says okay uh, Sanchi, we, i met you at this w3 summit can i have a coffee i want to understand if you could write me a check for one million dollars what would be your thing from an investor perspective uh, do you support anybody with DAO? so it would be good to understand your perspective actually that's a really good question and um, my first question to anyone who comes me who comes to me with like an investment uh, you know deal and saying that hey we are going to start a DAO I'm going to ask them why why do you need a DAO yeah. tell me exactly why you need a DAO and then we'll talk right. so what happens is people don't understand that um, DAO is not a very small thing it includes a lot of responsibility a lot of complexity a lot right. of infra it's not just a couple of people coming together, voting, and then working together, and it's just like, you know, all hype, no substance. Correct. It's not going to be like that. So the first question I'm going to ask is, why do you need a DAO? Where are you on the decentralization spectrum? Decentralization is not a yes or no answer. It's a spectrum. Where are you on that? If you're on the lower end or the higher end, why are you there? Why then do you need a DAO relating to that spectrum? And then another thing is, um, there's a lot of synergies that come into picture when we invest in deals, right? So the philosophy and the basic motivation behind your company and what they're trying to solve is very important for us. Like for example, we are a Web3 native fund. We, for example, don't have anything to do with climate. But if, a, uh, you know, if one day like a company who's creating a climate DAO, like Klima DAO for example, comes to us, we might not be that interested because our interests don't align. And what will then happen if we get a voting, like a governance rights or the tokens give us voting rights, we wouldn't be the best people to vote for that. And we wouldn't be acting in the best interests of the DAO. So overall, it's very important for VCs to also see their own synergies, own thesis, own motivation and own, you know, interest areas and skill sets and then choose which companies to invest in. 
Yeah, that's interesting, right? The, do you see a conflict of interest? You say that, okay, now I've given $2 million, taken 20% of the governance, right? Unless somebody who is contributing. So by the way, DAO, the way it works is, it's all community-based, right? So the more you contribute to the uh, DAO of you know, success, you keep getting more tokens. So at some point of time, if there are 10 million tokens, if, if at all Sanchi writes a check, she would have got 2 million tokens already, which means uh, she can start voting against uh, everybody. But somebody needs to come back to cross that 2 million and 2.1 million at some point of time to be able to, you know, uh, be say, okay, I can now vote, right? So did you, from a VC's perspective, do you see it's a kind of a conflict of interest that, okay, I don't know what to do, I've got the tokens, but I don't know what to do with these tokens. Is it what you are uh, hinting at? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what I even mentioned in my previous point that, right. um, okay, so tokens. Tokens are always not going to give you voting rights. There are different types of tokens exactly. as well, as you all know, yeah, right? So yes. it's very difficult for VCs to get those voting rights and voting tokens. Absolutely. Even if they do get, Correct. a lot of times it's not like equal. It's not one is to one. Correct. So a lot of times VCs, like startups are quite smart in that sense that not to give VC so much control. Got it. At the same time, uh, if the VCs, for example, I'll just give you a simple example of what we saw recently. Just last week, there was a DAO who came to us with an investment opportunity, mm -hmm. and they are an investment DAO. Okay. So now it makes sense for us to go vote or like for us to be in their DAO because we are also in investments. They are in investments, and what we can do is create a lot of synergies in terms of sharing deal flow, sharing deals, you know, sharing all types of resources, et cetera, et cetera. So when that comes into the picture, there will not be a cl conflict Absolutely. of interest, for example. Absolutely. But if there is like something related to business, which yeah. we think is different, but the DAO thinks differently, then of course there's conflict of interest that's gonna arise. And that's exactly what we're trying to solve through DAOs. And DAOs popularly are known as replacements for VCs. <laughs> but uh, funnily enough, VCs are investing in DAOs. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's that's like a hilarious point that uh, it's it's an irony, like how how it's happening and like the conflict of interest doesn't even like people Absolutely. don't even think about it. Yeah, correct. When I mean, there's money, want, there's everything. Just want to go with the flow. I mean, that's an unfortunate situation, and people want to go with the flow. But by the way, that brings an interesting perspective, right? And how would you defend that? You know, I I, I would completely it. agree with Sachi uh, because the companies. It, it makes sense for investment DAOs where the DAO itself is investing in other businesses and companies and all. Uh, but for companies where, uh, like we should not look at DAOs in the investment perspective. We should look at DAOs where group of people, uh, no matter it's, a, as you said, like a bunch of four or five people, no matter it's a small group or large group, coming together and taking decisions with DAO, which are hard-coded in the DAO, and that allows them to operate whatever sort of business they are doing in decentralized way with fair chance to anyone to come up with ideas and come up with their own uh, sort of uh, things for that particular business. It, it can be business, it can be non-profits, it can be anything. But we should look DAOs in that perspective instead of looking it at as an investment opportunity, obviously. DAOs, investment in DAOs for VCs, like VCs want to operate like a DAO, they, they definitely can go and operate like a DAO or invest in DAO and create a fund out of it. But uh, we should look for uh, small problems, like local, uh, in India, there are hundreds of different, uh, like uh, small groups. You see micro, uh, like uh, finance groups, right? Those like uh, village ladies create a group uh, together and they put some money and they uh, give that money to uh, like create a business out of it, right? So these short of groups can use DAOs and that will uh, like remove the trust deficit that is out there in those uh, short of uh, small groups, small businesses. It, it can be small, it can be into cooperatives, it can be into any short of business formation where the decision has to be taken unanimously, this, everyone has to be given fair rights to take part in the decision making. So DAO should be looked with that perspective instead of looking it at as an uh, investment uh, like uh, perspective. I really want to add on to this as well. I think the phrase properly, you know, would just be interest groups. The idea is again, if we look at blockchain in the abstract, it's allowing you through technologically allowing democracy, 
without physical barriers Correct. to scale interest group size. Okay. So a climber DAO can exist and members can be global, you know. Uh, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum is essentially the blitzkrieg business model that is venture-led businesses. Correct. You know, you need a spearhead running a business to scale it rapidly. Correct. So uh, a DAO is very much a contradiction in terms as far as running a business initially is concerned. So when you get to the size of a compound, of a curve, you know, and even that is a very hyper-specific application within the Web3 space. Correct. Where it can possibly be done because it's all DeFi. Correct. There's not really any other information involved, you know, it's just smart contract level finance. Right. So it's very easily automable and even that only when it reaches a certain scale can it be turned into a DAO and again gating through tokens is an issue. There's a bunch of stuff even there. Absolutely. But I feel like where DAOs initially will shine is interest groups that can be empowered through technology to reach a new phase where like Badri very well said, you know, um, removing trust from the equation is one core job of blockchain, yeah. you know. So if we can do that to organizational structures, that's what a DAO really is. Correct. And I mean, uh, sp speaking to Sanchi's point too, you know, an investment DAO is a very specific application small, where it will make sense. Right. You know, that's actually more like, okay, let's use blockchain to democratize investments. Correct. And that's what we saw through IDEO platforms Absolutely. and through a DAO maker and <clears throat> all of these things, right? Correct. So uh, that's where I think, again, it's the culture thing, man. Correct. What are you really interested in? And it Correct. can't be Web3. Okay, Absolutely. Web3 DAOs is like funny, to be honest, <laughs> because you can, you know, the, uh, the Web3 person is a sovereign and individual. They don't really want to be out here joining a bunch of DAOs. The person who will be in a lot of DAOs is a normal person realizing community is finally scaling to the global level. And I can, you know, much like how Yahoo Messenger used to be back in the day. I can find tennis enthusiasts in Austin now because there's a tennis DAO or whatever. So I think that's the future of DAOs, at least for the next couple of years. Correct. And I mean, investment DAOs are just a very small sliver. It, honestly, it's the speculative side again. You know, it's a little bit of a fight. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll tell you more on like why the conflict of interest will come in. When the companies are really young, they yeah. need a lot of centralization. Correct. They do not need decentralization because no one knows anything. Like they are just trying to build, they come together. And then when VCs enter, there's like absolutely no decentralization, decentralization that's gonna happen, right? Because like there's a principal agent interest now. We like, you know, startup founders are accountable to VCs, VCs are accountable to LPs, LPs are accountable to their own whatever. Of course. So like the principal agent problem is something that DAOs are supposed to solve, but it's not gonna get solved if VCs are involved at that early stage. When uh, it makes sense is at a later stage. Absolutely, yeah. Rush, we did speak about, uh, now, coming back to basics, right? now. We've been talking about what are the implications and now why should we automate that. But I think we did speak about you know, what is the basic thing that you need to do you know, to create a DAO. If somebody in the audience or somebody looking at this you know, after a couple of days, you know, they've got to start a DAO, where would they start and what are the recommended steps to start a DAO? See, uh, I totally believe that our industry jargonizes a lot because DAO as a structure has been existing from prehistoric times. If you look at Lijjat Papad, you have Kudumbashris in Kerala, you know, all these kind of things. Right. What we have figured out because of the blockchain is to create like, you know, having on-chain corporations. Right. It's very transparent stuff like that. So for, I, I would suggest a lot of people is that do not uh, take like the solution and look out for a problem. As in like, you know how to create a DAO, so we'll go right. and create anything on basis of that. But I would suggest is that if you really think the technology is that good, so Lijjat Papad will definitely want interna internationalization, right? right? So they'll want uh, people from outside as well. This is the first approach. You as a POC company, technology company, go to them and tell them that, okay, this is a structure right. that you can follow now. Right. So Lijjat Papad can be international or Kudumba Shri's who do a lot of things, they can be inter international. So I think the first approach for anyone should be that go to an existing corporation hmm. and tell them that how being on chain, because uh, these, for, for example, the RWAs of societies, hmm. one of the most corrupt people, like, bahut kharab log hote log. <laughs> ah, like, tenants ko de de ne jaga, bahut kuch hota. So bringing this, like, 
I joined blockchain because I totally believe, like the industry, because I totally believe that, you know, shared ownership and transparency are going to be the two, like the most important variables in all consumers tomorrow. Fine. Like if you have two options, uh, like for example, we belong to a certain economic strata, right? For us, people like us, we will definitely look out to see that what are we consuming. Fine. So with this thought process, if you approach to like creating a DAO for like Lidget Papad or like Fine. all these organizations, then it makes a lot of sense. Otherwise, as a technology, we are still improving. Cut. Like there is not, I mean, there is no breakthrough now. Cut. Yeah. Cut. 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 I have one question for you, by the way. Since we're doing a panel on DAOs, Cut. the way that permissionless raised funds was very interesting and actually very aligned with crypto principles and also the possibility of a DAO running because you're not raising through a VC now where there's a fistful of money coming in. Speak a little bit on why you took that choice. Is that why you can call yourself a DAO from default because there isn't one... I'll tell you why, I shouldn't, why you shouldn't take that choice. <laughs> so basically it's crazy. So in the beginning it was all good, everything is good. As soon as the market crashed, the entire, like, you know, people coming out for refunds. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's actually... Uh, I totally believe that, you know, when we wanted to, well, like, when, uh, like, I flew back to India to start permissionless. Like you said, I have all this thought process in mind, ki decentralized company banayenge, we'll have people telling us what to do and stuff like that. Down the line in a month, we realized that nobody's interested. Like, people buy the tokens, people buy whatever the equity they own, and then they chill. Like, unko sab kuch hi karna. they have their own important things in life. But I think, like you said, it's a very good approach for early stage companies. Uh, I think... Most of the companies in India can be started with $25,000. If you're asking for more than that, it's very bloat. $25,000, you, you have a runway of six months. You have three co-founders. One is a dev, one is a marketer, one is like the product guy. You can start anything in this country. Like, kuch bhi bana sakte ho. So I think in that case, uh, starting like uh, a DAO, as in like having, raising funds through tokens, is a very good approach and people can follow, but bade amounts ke I would suggest not to. Matlab, more than 50,000 people cross to mat karo, please. Bah, problem <laughs> I, I also have a little bit of more context I'll add to this. Because the NFT3 is now my third project, right? So I've also seen a couple of projects actually try and scale, the, raise through VCs through a token. Token comes out. So now obviously the, the actual value capture of a token is supposed to be that Anybody that wants say in the protocol, especially if it's a governance token, Cut. buys off of retail, right? So I've seen so many projects try and transition into a DAO, Cut. kind of like a curve, but they didn't have the user numbers. Obviously, yes. You know, it's, it's, it's an Oracle project, you know, uh, and you suddenly start trying to transition into a DAO and then a bear market happens. This is BC a very... Because VC people give a lot of exit liquidity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so wo no, there are so many conflicts of interest that suddenly come up. If you have taken up only smaller checks as a project Correct. and the market dumps like anything, you're going to face this refund issue. Obviously. And uh, either way is a bad option. Like for example, for NFT3, we are pre-TGE right now, you know. Correct. But that's why I, I, was, I was talking to Sanchi earlier, right? We rescinded a couple of allocations because mm -hmm. we were like, if you're this underconfident in us now, yeah. When we do have TG, we can't imagine that you will hold. So there is, I think, transitioning to DAOs is not as easy as anybody thinks, especially if you've taken venture money, you know. Absolutely. Okay, now look from the community angle, right? Now we are saying, okay, we have, ten, again, same example of 10 million tokens, right? We have got to have, now we have not taken the VC money, so the 10 million still exists, right? The second thesis I'm talking about. Now you talk about, uh, now doing your, now talking about the project, and you can go to this, and start now engaging the community and say, okay, now let's start inviting them, let them start buying some tokens, let's say at 10 cents per token because there are governance tokens. Now, where would they benefit, right? Now, if they come in the early stages and if somebody was only investing $1,000 out of this 10 million that's available, right? How do you create the engagement? Because you're also looking from a community perspective. You looked at the founders from a venture, you know, VC perspective, you come from Gen Z, you know, your perspective, and you know, you've given your own thought. But you know, we need to look at from a community perspective. What do they think of a DAO and why should they actually come in, right? We have to sell hope to them, no? Like most of this, how it works is, uh, like we have did a lot of data analysis and we have figured it out that 
You have to one, like giveaways is something that constantly you can do. Correct. Second is that if you can involve your people, that people who are working and like start paying them something for being a part of it. So it could be like, that is why we built DSync as a product as well. Hmm. You can like actually get your community to do things for you, like manage projects and stuff like that. So if you can get that done from them, like, you know, constantly pay them something in return of you doing something, you know, these kind of things, structures work. Okay. Like it, it's very, it's very common across like industries. अगर आपको community में respective web three या कुछ भी है web three में सिर्फ liquidity जल्दी होता है इसके लिए लोग participate करते हैं but कोई भी community का एक ही agenda होता है कि अगर लोगों को वो community में से constantly कुछ मिल रहा है if they are getting from that community something it should be either money it should be cloud it should be something like you know some ways to prove that they are like one step ahead they'll constantly be a part of your this if you look at BAYC they like I I've been and hold a long back बहुत पहले बहुत पहले था but then जब बहुत पैसा बढ़ गया मैंने बोला बेचो Cut. Because it made no sense, like there's, there's no value, right? It's a JPG. Cut. But when you realize in a long spectrum, there are people who still defend them. You Cut. know, other side is good, other deeds are doing better, you know, these kind of things. These kind of engagements you can only bring when people believe that they'll get clout Cut. if they join your crowd. So usual way is that if there is an ambassador, like we had a call and we told, you know, if we have an ambassador, if that person gives you a shout out for being in the, uh, you know, the being DAO, in the yeah. DAO and stuff like that, Cut. it makes a lot of sense. So the only way to engage people is hope across industries. I think I'll take a step back yeah, yeah. and start from a very simple uh, area of um, hiring. Okay, so for like today, I'm, I'm a Gen Z, uh, Roshan is a Gen Z. We know the problems that we face in typical traditional corporate structures. There's the great resignation, there's like rage applying, quiet quitting, moonlighting and all the trends that you've been seeing so far. So it's extremely clear that Gen Z and the next generation coming ahead is not going to be okay with the, you know, 50 year, 100 year old corporate structures and like, you know, HR models and hiring structures and like, basically the organizational structure is not well suited for us. Okay. What we need is a shared ownership to be a part of a community that we really want to be a part of and have equal, equitable, equitability is very important. Equal, more than equality, equitability. Like the amount of work that you're doing should be equal to the amount of responsibility and incentive that you're getting. And that's something that a DAO brings, which a normal so we corporate- We have the router now. That's what yeah. yeah, we're talking about. So the last question to you maybe. Yeah, I actually want to continue this. This is a very sure, fertile yeah. piece, yeah. I think, you know. I think it's a very simple framework and it'll kind of add what, what Sachi and Rosh were saying. Yeah. Find a problem, Got it. firstly find a real problem. Secondly, understand the different pillars of Web3. One of them is just incentive mechanism, like Rosh said. Yes. So, you know, you've used Paytm, you've used Uber, you have gotten cashbacks. Got Imagine that, but preemptively in something, and it's not just money, it gives you control over that thing also. Correct. That's a token, in most cases, if it's a governance token, right? So, but that's only one sliver of it. The other sliver of it is um, instantly being part of something ideologically. Correct. That's the other piece. So, marketing in Web3 is not about speculation. Mm. If that is all you will do, you will die in a bear market. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely you will die. And hundreds of projects have died, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, <clears throat> marketing in Web3 is going to be about that problem that you chose. How do I make people emotional about it? How do I remind them how big of a pain in the ass, excuse my French, that problem is Got it. and how hard I need it to be solved. Got it. Now you add into that somebody working on it and an incentive mechanism for everybody Makes to sense. come join the cause. Got now it. you really have a snowball effect and a virtuous cycle of Got incentives it. as well as alignment. Absolutely. I think that's the ultimate goal Correct. for any doubt.